Rita and Alan, thanks so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Yes. I'd like to start by asking each of you to tell us briefly about yourselves and why you're running for office. Rita, since you're the incumbent, we'll start with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I am a longtime resident of the Coachella Valley, 40 years and um, 20 years in Cathedral City. And my profession, which I retired from in 2005, um, and then again in 2011, I'm a retired public school administrator, elementary school principal. Um, and I, uh, in between my uh, retirements, I started, you know, snapping on the, t the tables, deciding what to do with myself. And I had an opportunity to um, be involved in the Public Arts Commission for Cathedral City. And I loved it and learned about that facet of the community and public service. I went back to work as a school principal in Coachella for Coachella Valley Unified School District for three years. And when I retired from there, um, I was asked to join the uh, Cathedral City Senior Center and was on the board there for three years. So I learned about um, that the elder population and what community services were available to them. So um, when I retired again, um, uh, some folks asked me if I would be uh, willing to throw my hat in the ring. Um, there was a special election following the death of our mayor, Greg Pettis. Um, and at that time, the, the council had decided to appoint someone. And then that meeting got very uproarious and tumultuous and lots of energy. Um, and so they made a decision to put it to a public vote. So, um, and that was a special election he held last year. And I was sworn in September 25th. And the opportunity to continue in my advocacy for the residents of Cathedral City is paramount. So I'm a, I'm a uh, trusted servant and a steady hand. Um, and um, I love, I lo my, my calling is for public service. All right, Alan. I have served on public arts for the past six years and I was honored to uh, be the chair of the public arts. That's something uh, Rita and I have in common. We both served. Um, I am proud to have been part of a commission a super activist group that brought more art, murals, and sculptures to our city than has ever happened in the past. Uh, because of the cannabis industry, we depend on developer money. It's a, a percentage of 1% of the money. And because of that, we were infused with half a million dollars, which is the most we've ever had. And as a result, we were very active in making sure that more art was brought into our city. And one of the things we wanted, and we got an increase through the, to the, uh, the city council, is live art, which is where we can serve the seniors, we can serve the students, we can serve the high school by providing art, music, and dance programs, which is exactly what we did. So because um, I was, uh, was served, serving for six years, I was turned out in June. I thought, well, what's next for me? I'm very involved in the city. I very much love the city. Well, it's time to run for council. And that's what I'm doing. I've been very active because when we moved here 10 years ago, I said, what does the city lack right now? It was exposure. Nobody knew what was going on in the city because nobody was videotaping or taking pictures. So I just took it upon myself to do that. And when my husband ran and won in 2014, uh, the mayor at the time, Stan Henry, asked me if I'd be interested in videotaping the, uh, the uh, state of the city, because that was something that normally a mayor does. He said, I don't want that responsibility on just the mayor. I want to share it with other council members. Would you be interested in videotaping other council members and we could show it at their meeting? And I said, perfect. And that happened for four years and I continue to help Chris Farman doing that. So that's the reason I feel like I could do a good job. Let me ask both of you, in your opinion, what are the top three issues affecting Cathedral City? And if elected, how do you plan to address those issues? Rita. I have participated in, and as Mr. Carvalho has too, in many, many forums, um, uh, asking public servants what they feel is the, is the most uh, critical issue. And to a person, everyone says COVID-19. So how we address that um, and uh, restore the health of our community physically and financially, um, that's the primary consideration. Um, I'm very proud to um, be part of this council that enacted early measures um, for communication protocols, and, and challenging residents to take care of themselves um, by wearing a mask and social distancing and um, 
only going out when when essential. The second, and it's the w one that's talked about all the time and generates lots and lots of energy, is the short-term vacation rental issue. Um, and as a council, we voted unanimously to phase them out over the course of two years. Um, and our primary consideration is the quality of life for the residents. We, we started um, uh, initiating a process with a short-term vacation rental task force over a year ago. Um, and they brought to us recommendations and the final analysis and the, the wonderful word that Mayor Aguilar used to describe the whole um, situation is that short-term vacation rentals are incompatible um, with the quality of life for long-term residents. So um, we have made a decision to go forward with that. Um, and thirdly, um, you know, uh, Mr. Carvalho talked about the, the, uh, the interest in Cathedral City in the Arts and Entertainment District. And we certainly, we certainly want to capitalize on, on all the momentum that we have going. Um, I just had an opportunity to participate in the dedication of our new fire station um, that was on Saturday. And that was a, that's a long-term process. Um, and uh, we have a new fire chief who will be starting November 1st, and we're very proud of that. And um, so we look forward to all sorts of wonderful things coming into the city. Alan. Yes. Uh, first of all, um, the pandemic, as Ms. Lamb has mentioned, is obviously the most important thing in the whole world. And so addressing public health and public concern, and I'm also proud of the way uh, our mayor addressed the concerns. We can all assume that the county health is in, is in charge. And we can assume that the state and the feds are in charge. But honestly, it's really up to all of us to be in charge of our own public health. And when we have a great mayor like Mayor Aguilar, who's taken initiative to make sure that our public safety is primary, that he went out to the supervisor Perez and got some money to make sure that the city was responsible for promoting good health and being concerned about using masks, social distancing, very important. Balancing the budget is obviously important. Besides public health, we're concerned about the economy and, and making sure that the, bu the budget is balanced and that their budget was balanced this year because of the $21 million that was left by the previous council where my husband was part of what I call Team 2014 uh, in the process of bringing cannabis into the city, which he and I were very responsible for moving forward. $21 million was put in the, in the cash reserve. Five million of that was used to balance this year's budget. And we need to create more legacy in the future. We have to listen to the needs of the residents. There are many people in our community that don't feel engaged. The Latino community, 60% of our city and our district is the Latino community. I've been reaching out practically every day. They're not feeling engaged. I feel as though instead of, of the community coming to City Hall, We've had, the city has developed the City in Your Corner, which is a wonderful program. I wanna take it a step further. I think we should take our city council members to the neighborhoods. Let's have block parties. Let's engage the community one-on-one. -on -one. So I wanna do more of us engaging the community so the, the, the community can engage more into the city. Finally, what is the message you want voters to hear and why should they choose you versus your opponent? Rita? Well, I, uh, um, number one, I enjoyed the full support of Mayor Aguilar and uh, my colleagues on city council. Um, I am endorsed and supported by the fire department, our police department. Um, and I, this last year has been, you know, I talked about it when I was first sworn in. It's startling and wonderful. And to have this opportunity to represent the residents of Cathedral City is truly the honor of my life. Um, I, I unquestionably have demonstrated the capacity to, um, for patience, open-mindedness, and willingness to listen to the residents and act on their concerns. Um, and I, um, I, I find it pure joy. Um, I, I am not sidetracked. Um, I stay focused on resident and business needs for Cathedral City, um, and that's my advocacy. So, um, you know, I, uh, I f fully enjoyed the support of uh, the residents of Cathedral City, and I look forward to serving again. Thank you. Alan. Yes. Um, 
I've been here for 10 years, and I know that Ms. Lamb's been here for about 20. I think it's important that no matter how long you've been here, it's the quality of how much you're willing to give to your city. We both served on public arts. I went a step beyond by serving my community in ways that I didn't think I would or could. I came here to retire. I didn't expect that they would, I would feel a need to serve the community by providing videos and photographs. I've got 300 videos on my YouTube page. I've done many videos for the city. I mean, it's part of what I do. It's part of how I feel I can engage. It's important to document and archive what the great things that have happened in our city. Uh, I, I think that, again, when you come to a city that you love, you can't just wait for a, a position to open up to run for council. I mean, I was involved and I went to, I've attended every city council meeting since I moved here 10 years ago. I might have missed two. It's important that you don't just show up two or three months before uh, a particular council position is open, but you actually show up for all of the meetings and, and show interest well before you even consider or dream that you'd run for council. I just have a passion for my city. And whether I win or lose, my passion's not gonna go away. I strongly feel connected to the city and more so now than I've ever felt. So I'm grateful for the opportunity to run. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve and I will continue to, my passion will not wane. So again, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Rita, for being part of this. And uh, it's coming up soon before you know it, the election is here. So please, I wanna remind everybody to please sign your ballots, sign the back of your envelope and date it because without that, the, the ballot is not valid. So thank you again for this opportunity. Well, you were right about that, Alan. Thank you so much. Rita and Alan, we appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Peter.